Joe's rusty. I just feel like anytime I, I would do like you know, like Grizzly, Copenhagen, fucking whatever the fuck other one, Kodiak, whatever the fuck they are, I would I'm I'm about to do something and it's gonna be like pure focus and full force no matter what. Cause like whenever I had, I was uh doing some electrical work in the plants and shit, you can't smoke out there, so you you can fucking take a dip, you know, without anybody seeing. But motherfucker, I, I don't know. It just fucking just made yeah. me gator the fuck. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't make you sick. Fuck no, man. It made me fucking focused. Yeah, I mean, some people they can't handle it. But I'm not good at spitting. You're not good at spitting. I'm not good at spitting. It looks like a fucking oil slick on the fucking ground whenever I do it. Like, what? <laughs> well, that's probably something internal going on. I don't, I don't know, dude. <laughs> that I'm just rough. I'm just not good at dipping. Uh, you sp- if you spit in oil, then you know you need to see about that. It's like it's fucking. Yeah, I used to get made fun of because they went. They stopped letting me get some because because I went. I, I bought a can and I just share it with everybody because I just needed a little bit. Yeah, because you didn't want to do it. I had, I didn't want to. And I have a thing yeah. about like shit in my teeth, you know. I don't, I don't like that. But whenever I, I spit, they were like, "Good God, dude, fucking just do less." I'm like, I just did like this much. I like, no, just spit less. And yeah, I, I'll agree with you on that. The uh, snuff is just gross, bro. That to chewing tobacco and yeah. like it's just, especially it's a nasty if, habit for uh, sure. Yeah, I mean the Zen's like it's, it's spit free, so you don't have to do the anything. Zen is in, dude. Yeah, bro. It's a uh, our pouches, might I say? I don't mean to. Foot. Kleenex, the whole Zen pouch industry, whatever. What was the What was the one you mentioned a while ago? The uh, the, the, the camel snus. snus. I used to back in the gap. I used to love the camel. But snus. do you do you spit those or do no? You really just, spitless tobacco. You just, just kind of like just drink that shit. I guess you just, just drink, drink nicotine, boy. That's fucking hardcore as shit. Well, you drink your spit. Yeah, but like you're drinking the nicotine, the stuff. You're yeah. ingesting it. Yeah, you're ingesting it. Or yeah. when you smoke it, you're just putting it in your lungs. Yeah, which is far worse, let's be honest. I do remember uh, growing up on the farm, we had got a hold of some Red Man, and uh, we tried to dry it out to roll it up and smoke it because we, we, were, we were out of cigarette butts to pick up. <laughs> cause that's oh, how we were. smoking, chewing tobacco. That's yeah, ex- don't do that. That's yeah. crazy. Don't do that. It'll make you fucking sick as a fucking dog, dude. I can imagine. Oh, man. It was so bad. See, we used to smoke uh, paper D- yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Or grass, like literal grass. We uh, we did uh, <laughs> uh, sassafras leaves. You know what they make gumbo filet out of? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we would crumble up some sassafras leaves and just roll it up in... in like bay leaves? It's kind of like a bay leaf, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a fucking... It's a spice. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. I don't know. I grew up in a... a a family that both my my dad and my stepmom smoked, so I didn't really have the urge to want to smoke until you had kids. Uh, yeah. No, until uh, <laughs> I worked at Cachada. Uh they used to have the the non smoking and smoking areas. And if you were in the non smoking area, there was nobody in there to talk to. Everybody mm. was in the smoking room. So eventually, that's how I learned and got addicted to cigarettes is because of the casino. I still crave Who would have thought. I still crave a cigarette, especially whenever I'm having some beers and stuff. I'm like, man, let me just get one. But then, like, it just tastes like ass. So I just kind of, you know, go back to the old douche flute. <laughs> yeah, it's cigarettes are, yeah, they're, they're not good. They look cool as fuck, though. Dude, let's I, be honest. I find it incredibly <laughs> attractive whenever there's, like, a hot girl smoking a cigarette. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I fucking love it. I love a, I love a, a a beautiful woman smoking a cigarette. It just seems fucking... Yeah, so there you go, kids. If you, Cigarettes are not good for you, but they make you look cool. So yeah. smoke more cigarettes. <laughs> Damn, them great words of wisdom right off the bat. And we, You'll be cool. <laughs> be, hey, be the coolest. <laughs> hey, uh, for all the viewers on YouTube, check out our new digs. We are finally... We've been talking about it for weeks. And what, what are we, we are calling here. it? Is this... Is this what like, is this? I don't... I, I was thinking this... Something long studio, but we can call it whatever. It don't matter to me. It's I'm sure it'll spot. come to you. Yeah. The spot. Because we used to call Terrence's house the Third Coast Lounge. And then we had the Third Coast Shed. And this, this, this hits different. This is more of a box in a big shed. Yeah, we're in a, <laughs> this is a roomception going on. We are inside <laughs> of inside something, inside the earth. Yes. In, and inside we'll, our we'll, universe. <laughs> 
we should just do like hashtag the coordinates of here specifically maybe. right here maybe not maybe probably maybe not, not. <laughs> <laughs> give the government our direct location i mean they they can tap in the where can we find mind. these what oh they're right here pieces of shit. i'm not worried about the government i'm worried about other people yeah true that yeah all right bad idea <laughs> terrible idea anyway what's up chuck how you doing buddy i'm doing good bro Fuck yeah, good to see you, dude. And that fucking smooth-ass e-bike you fucking got, dude. Yeah, bro, it's a good time. That is a... I, I want one. Yeah, you should get one. I want I want that and a golf cart. Wait, where do you stay? In uh, Dry Creek. You stay in the country, huh? Yeah. I would just get a motor. Just get a motor? If you want one. If you want to have... You know, if you, if you just want to ride around the country and trails and stuff, I would just get a motor. Right. Uh, I got mine to kind of just bebop around the city, you know? It's easy to get around like that. Like you're talking about, it's way conv- more convenient to like find <coughs> instead of like driving a car in the city. You don't have to worry about fucking parking. You can just like tie that bitch up. Yeah, and it's technically classified as a bicycle still, like an e-bike. You Fuck know, it's, yeah. it's not, oh, a, it's so not can, a motorcycle or a moped. You can park it in the the bike stalls and stuff too. Yeah, I mean, I you know I try not to take up those too much. I try not to park it too much anywhere, to be honest with you, because New Orleans, you just never know, like. Bike will disappear in a yeah, second. Someone going yeah. nab that. It, it looks nice too. Yeah, it's 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 definitely loud. I, I get asked about it pretty much everywhere I go. Yeah, you know, New Orleans can't. You can fall into dangerous things down in New Orleans <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I saw you eyeball Jacoby on. That. Yeah, I'm, proud <laughs> I'm not getting that. no details for. But if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, hey, it's the truth. You I really still can't, love you. <laughs> that's one thing about the truth. You really can't escape it. You know, yeah. at, at some point, you can't embrace it either. Whenever it's bad, <laughs> but it's like when, you know, just you know, so a learning. It is a learning. It, it is what it is. I have known. I've, I've come to realize my uh, my my limitations, and so I've been doing way better with them. So, congrats on limitations. Yeah. Yeah, you got to know yourself first sometimes. And actually, you know, don't trust people either, you know. <laughs> That's another thing, especially, you know. You do not trust anyone? I, I like, I love to trust people. But then that's just a bad. Why don't you trust, why? You know, you're not supposed to, it's like you give someone an inch and they, and they fuck you for a mile, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just one of those things. And I, and, you know. Well, you think that just comes from past experience or, or is that uh, just something that you were taught? Or? No, well, yeah, it's past, definitely a past experience. Like, uh, I in over the years, I realized that I'm too nice of a person, especially because I'm a people person. I, I thrive around people. I love to be around people, but people are shitty, and they and they will take advantage of of a of a person who's a little bit too uh, happy go lucky, I guess you could say, or whatever, mm-hmm. or a guy that's too relaxed, and it. it it brought me back to a place like, oh, I remember people now. Fuck those motherfuckers. I'm in it for me again. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I'm at. So Yeah, to me, I just feel like as long as you're conscious of whatever line you're willing to draw, uh, then you can then you kind of have a certain stability about the whole situation. Like it's situational regardless of, of what it is for me personally. Uh you know, you don't want to give too much of yourself because you know you'll be depleted in the end. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you um, to a certain extent. Like I say, I got a lot of friends and a lot of people that I know I can turn to, and and that that I know can turn to me. So it's a it's a thing. Like it's a it's a, hopefully you know a give and take with with friendship. You know, as it should be. Oh, I, I'm not talking about friendship. I'm just talking about. Well, I mean, you know, like the, uh, when it comes to acquaintances, and I mean, how do you mean, like? Yeah, that's what, that's what I mean. Like people, you just there's, <laughs> you meet on happenstance, and then you they 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 just prey on your vulnerabilities, mm. you know. And like you say, you like maybe I just like would leave myself too open to to be vulnerable, and that is my mistake. Mm. You know, I should I, I should always you should always have a guard up because you really can't really trust just everybody yeah hmm. and then you end up losing your phone wallet and keys and you know <laughs> and there we go down <laughs> the rabbit hole and we it, are it was we're so, back. It, it was so crazy it's like I, I, Wait, so I, who I, lost I, your phone wallet and keys i think i did but <laughs> but but i i came to i still had my adidas on but i had no socks 
but I had nothing else. <laughs> so I was just like, well, at least I have my shoes. And I love those shoes. Like, those are one of my favorite pair of shoes. But, you know, I digress. You know, just just know your limits. When you, when you, when you go into the jungle, bring a knife. But <laughs> it's, it's like, that's like a metaphor, you know. It's, and that's your – keep your wits sharp. That's your, that's your knife, you know. Just keep, you know – Keep the keep the the wild animal tame inside you, and keep your knife sharp, and that's get your that wits. monkey in the bottle. Baby. Yeah, dude, fucking don't. And yeah, so <clears throat> I got some good news for you, and some just some like big shout out to all the listeners out there, because for the last four years, every week we've had at the bare minimum every week three hundred listens on the platform for over four years and i'm not talking about that's just the bare minimum like the lowest number i think it's 320 and that's consistent for four years and that you know we spike all the time and i think our biggest spike in them four years is like around three thousand in one week so just having that 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 base of 320 is just that consistent line every every week looking at the numbers it's just a cool feeling, and especially for that span to have that much consistent listeners. And 320 fan base, that's pretty cool in my opinion. Is that like partial cool. listeners? Does it show that if, they're like, if they start listening and they only give in like 15 to 20 minutes? Yeah, they're like, Jacoby won't shut the that, fuck up. I, <laughs> on, <laughs> on the YouTube, it does. Oh, okay. okay. Well, and uh, like uh, videos and shorts on like uh, TikTok, it will show that uh, analytic, analytic shit. But on the platforms, you have to at least listen to one third of the episode for it to count as a stream. Well, that counts as a listen. So that's yeah. like thirty-five to forty minutes that's on about average. That's how far I usually get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, hey, as long as you give it a fucking go, dude. Yeah, or you can just skip to the end and listen to the artist of the week. You know, whatever y'all want to yeah. do. We always have great music and we always have great guests. So you can like just. We we can start doing timestamps on like when we're not talking and <laughs> then give it to the guy that we're with or the gal that we're with. So yeah, maybe maybe. No, dude, Third Coast is my comfort food, man. I, hey. I listen to it when I, uh, you know, when I want to be connected with the homies. Bring you back home a little bit. A uh, big shout out to Mitch up there and West Monroe. He will be re- uh, doing the premiere of Sea of Madness on the twenty eighth. Fuck yeah! Uh, it's twenty five dollars a ticket. And they have a whole festivity day planned out. They're going to play the Bogman first, and they're going to do Sea of Madness release. And then the bar next to the Civic Center, Trainwreck Method, will be playing as an after-party thing. Ah, come on. Yeah, so they're doing it big up there. And big, uh, what's his name? Uh, Aaron? Brad? Brad, the big dude, big swole dude. Yeah, up yeah, there. yeah, uh, yeah. He got married, so congratulations, oh, congratulations to you, bro. Brad. Yeah, dude, Time kinda, to not. Yeah, that guy was fucking great, dude. Hey, and big out, uh, big big ups to the guys in uh, Aaron, Gustavo, Copper, and Fuzzy mm-hmm. for uh, jamming up there with those guys. I'm glad they're they're uh, interconnected as well. Shout out Zane, I love you, motherfucker. Um, and shout out everybody that you know from the 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 north side of the state that uh, yep. that fucks with us. Cause we fuck with y'all too. And we got a lot of uh, people coming out of the bottom of the state in New Orleans at uh, Pet Devoid. We have ten different people we'll be interviewing in the span of two days and we got a week baby yeah we got a week man and we're we got lights on ac rolling and you could look back and i look at some of them pictures i can visualize how this motherfucker looked if the listeners i know y'all seen a few pictures on the platforms but if you could just seen the shit that was in the in here beforehand the million sign I would think a lot of people wonder by and would be like, yeah, this ain't nothing. But Shout out Craig Jones. Just, just looking. <laughs> Craig Jones. Time. This podcast is sponsored by <laughs> Craig Jones. <man. laughs> and his billion, quadrillion signs. I hope he, I hope he won that election. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, he'll, it he'll, was he'll, tough. he'll get the next one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It probably won't be the next one. But well, hey, look. Shout out. Shout out Mr. <laughs> Craig, man. He's the shit. And big shout out to Chuck for giving us the, uh, the opportunity to take this space and turn it into something out the ordinary. Who would ever thought a podcast studio in Oakdale? It's a dude. It, I love it, man. It's, it's a beautiful start to to something that's going to keep on rolling. It needs needs to happen, you know. 
it gives us a little a little project too to work on collectively you know uh, i wish that we would have thought of this sooner and it would have <laughs> just you know we could have just been building on it because like we have a lot of ideas you know yeah. and we're this well what what joe and his uh his child labor has done shout out congratulations oh god damn it I push- <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah fun beat Child labor. Check the sound pad, Joe. <laughs> Check the sound pad. My bad. But uh, no, Joe. Joe has turned the space completely around. Total three hundred and sixty, and I would sleep in here. <laughs> That's not saying much. Though. That's not really. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know. But you know, it makes it sound really good, though. <laughs> and what's uh, what the big part about it too is we don't have to worry about cicadas. We don't have to worry about the heat no more. And then we got a space. Our space. A set spot to collectively think too, you mm-hmm. know. You know, it ain't at my house. It ain't at in Terrence's bedroom. You know, it ain't. And dismissed it. We got a solid spot to record every week, or you know, whenever. And hopefully that will bring other people, you know, and it have its own identity. Yeah. In my idea. I'm talking with my hands. I'm and we thank this man right here for it. Yep. Dude. Bro, yeah. No, thank yourselves, man. It takes. You know what y'all, all the episodes that y'all recorded in the shed and Terrence's living room. You know those are important places in the in the history of of what it is. You know, I, even if it wasn't sooner, you know it's now, and and that's the most important part. You know, and you, it it took all of those episodes to get to this point. You know, it's like a uh, a new chapter. Absolutely, definitely, and and I would rather be nowhere else, man. Who knows? what we'll, eventually we'll be able to run some electricity over here and and not have to run a generator. So, you know. It's a it's a work it's a project you know that you, like you said we can all work on, and like seeing like being being a part of like the location and stuff and always seeing, you know it's always it it gives us a more of a reason to like push development, you know like what what's what what can we do next you know and this is just like just another uh, landmark for us just to like work all right after this what are we gonna do. And especially mm-hmm. like this, this is this is like a what we're gonna do now with this and with the podcast, you know. So it's it's super exciting, man. It's like the the potential is like limitless. It really is. Yeah, I think y'all should get some Oakdale greats in here, man. Like some uh, like the who who manages the McDonald's here, you know? That'd be a good one. <laughs> that'd be a good guess. I'm just saying. I yeah, I, I, it'd be a good, like, solid spot, too, and then <laughs> it's just going to... I'm telling you, get We're just going to fucking speed bump over what Charlie said. <laughs> no, no I mean, saying. we could... For, no, we saying. would Or get Keno in here, bro. That'd be sick. <laughs> Well, no, you trying like that's friends. like saying you want to bring Nady Boy on the podcast, yes. no. dude. <laughs> dude, dude, that's I'm kind of I'm kind of down, but at the same time, that might be a really bad idea. But you know, we should, we should. Or you know who I just talked to today on the phone for a while is uh, Trinity Terrell. Uh, uh, yeah. He runs the fireworks stand, bro. Hey, that'd be a great interview. I have a lot of questions about fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, uh, I bumped into him the other day, and uh, I talked to him at his fireworks, and I went and bought some, and he's supposed to, he wants to do an interview. Wait, yeah. they're selling fireworks right now? No, no, he just does it during the holiday well, season. Uh, I mean, as a sneak, uh, you know, for those who are listening, we definitely going to have some shit blowing up at the void this Fuck. year. So you'll have to figure out when it's going to happen, but, you know. That's super fucking exciting. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, Hell but yeah. no, my boy Trent's uh, going to hook it up. And, and, dude, yeah, it's been a long time coming. We went to a, a Saints game, like, eight, literally, like, eight years ago, and we talked about, you know, collabing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, he, so he's going to bring the fire, so. Fuck yeah, dude. That's going to be sick. <laughs> That's crazy, too, because I literally just talked to him mm-hmm. this week about doing the show. You need one of these? Uh, I'm good, man. Thank you. Chuck, don't drink them like we do, Koba. <laughs> well, I'm going back to the boat tomorrow for three days, so I'm trying to, you know, get my my, my fill in. Yeah, I still want uh, a segment, bro, Koba, on the boat. It's 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 not as easily obtained as you would think, bro. A selfie video. I can, but I can't. 
we're we're still on the bayou. We're we're in shipyard on intercoastal right now. We're not back out at sea just yet. We are underway with maintenance, but we're not underway to the drink yet. As soon as we get back to the drink, I'm gonna get down on it. Well, I'm just saying, Koba, words of wisdom, videos or something. Hey, what kind of? Uh, we just want to hear from you, bud. Let yeah. me see your phone. <laughs> let me see the bottom of your phone. What kind of charger is it? C type. C type. I got uh, before you leave. I got something I want to give you to okay. play Crack. with. But like right now, like <laughs> right no, no, no. I got you. Uh, you I got wireless fucking mics. You okay. can plug into your your C port, and I want to see if it works with your phone well. We need to interview with mine. your boss. Interview with your boss. It's two little. <laughs> it's two little handheld little mics with like uh, little booms on it too. It's really cool. They're I'm, like forty just, bucks. I just love my job, and I don't want to get fired. <laughs> that's all. I, that's all it is. Yeah, but you don't have to mention where you work. I, it's just like I can show videos, but it can't be of the mean, vessel or the work we're doing. Or your penis. Or my penis. <laughs> I mean, you can, but that's for the Patreon. Shout out to Third Coast OnlyFans coming soon. <laughs> We've been saying this for fucking four years. We're going to get one eventually. Charlie, what's your favorite month? Uh, All of them, man. Well, you're gonna be you're gonna be Mister November. <laughs> That's a wild idea. Imagine your guest as like stars and your only fans for twelve months. But, so you have Chuck. but look, we and, like, they, and you put it out of calendar. They don't even know that they're in it. But, just, like, <laughs> but look, you ain't got a you ain't got a show. I just need you naked holding a base over your junk. Mm, why do you need mm. that? Before the calendar, you're <laughs> Mister November. You need that. Or the calendar. <laughs> the listeners need that. Dude, I would have that calendar. Please don't send me no picture like that, Chuck. Please. <laughs> Charlie, I, I, I need this. I've already got prints made. I'll get Fuck you one yeah. after the show. Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got see, I, see, see, I think, I think it's something that we can do that's, that's like borderline inappropriate but also fun. And that, dude, who – we we could get this. We can, we, this, is a, this is a ball. We're going to snowball it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Just we're going to get some – we're gonna get some of our past guests, some of the the, the favorite reoccurring guests. Go ahead and name them off. Let's hear them. Okay, we're gonna get Ben Jones in that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, we're gonna get Benny in there. Wait more month. Oh, see that's I need to I need to ask him. I'm oh, I'm right. Mr. February. Okay, you just get that. You get the love month. Huh? Yeah, that? Well, my birthday's on Valentine's Day. Okay, all right. So is my mom's. Miss and, and really my, and uh, and their uh, my parents' anniversary. Come on with it. Yeah. Well, hot fucking dog, dude. <clears throat> so, do I have to be in the month? Oh yeah, you're you're in there. Anyway. I take January, you the coldest get, month. You should probably get Halloween. I just <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get a close up <laughs> shot to sh- see every individual hair on your torso. <laughs> there ain't enough. It's gonna uh, be a frame fucking rate for 8K, all that. It's gonna be an eight K <laughs> fucking enough. high def fucking picture of just Joe and his fucking flesh rug. <laughs> just fucking flex it, dude. I didn't say flesh rug. We're going to have that, power. We, you want power tools? We got power tools, dude. Oh, speaking of power tools, I may or may not have cut a hole in the wall. Uh, I, I, told, I told him about it. Oh, okay. My so bad. I can pull the generator in and out? And, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's I'm, fine. I'm sorry no, that's <laughs> if cool. it wasn't. But we hey, made whatever you gotta do. Side. Whatever you got to do. Uh, that yeah. saw saw is a motherfucker. It cut through anything. <laughs> Wood, trees, tin. But note to self, <laughs> when, you, when you're cutting with that Sawzall and you're cutting tin, that metal is going to fly everywhere. It flew, it pepper sprayed in my face. Do you ever, uh, do you ever like flip your... Pretty sure your, that's a piece right there. Do you ever like flip <clears throat> your blade the opposite way? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. I just got that thing. <laughs> I just figured out how to Dude. put the blade in there perfect. I mean, the right way. Out of all power tools, I think the Sawzall is like definitely in the top three. Mm-hmm. As like most fucking useful, out of any fucking power tool, I didn't. Even, even, impact is definitely top two for sure. But dude, the sawzall, <coughs> you can do so much with the fucking sawzall, dude. Yeah, I just got a uh, electric chainsaw. Come e- on, an ego. The egos. Yeah, dude. And it, dude, it's, it's a relatively cheap thing, but I mean, as far as the chainsaw goes, as long as you keep the chains sharp. All you need is a uh, bar and chain oil in it, and uh, you charge that thing. It takes like thirty minutes to charge, maybe. How big of a bar you got? What's your, the uh, the length of the chain? Yeah, uh, yeah. The blade is thirteen inches. Oh, that's fucking plenty big. Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, dude. For certain for certain things. But dude, it'll cut it'll cut through 
four by four posts and and uh, trees, pretty easily, pretty pretty medium sized trees. Yeah, chainsaws. Now I'm just thinking about <laughs> trees. I'm like, what is a medium sized tree? Is it medium size like this? Yeah, perfect. You nailed it. That's a pretty good sized tree. That's dude. a medium sized tree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Versus. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, because a tree like this is a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's a yeah. That's just a. I'm just saying, like all the all the electric power tools are uh, are really coming around. It's like becoming a thing. Hey, dude, I still fuck with Harbor Freight shit. You know what I'm saying? I just got my auger from Ar- Harbor Freight. Yeah, I fuck with Ar- uh, Harbor Freight like a motherfucker, dude. Because like a lot of their like the like the wrenches and their ratchet sets and shit, they got lifetime fucking warranties, dude. Try to break that motherfucker. Please break it, cause they'll give you a fucking new set, dude. I could talk about tools all day long. I'm I'm sorry for doing that, but it's like, it's like kind of consumed a, a a portion of my life now. Like just putting the festival together and yeah. like and doing all these projects out here. It's like, I it's it's and it's a part of my life that I I never really, you know, got to like explore as you know a younger adult. So it's. It's all, I, I geek out over tools and, and things like that all the time, bro. Well, Joe Joe saw my, my fucking DeWalt bag. I bought, a, like, a full DeWalt set from Lowe's. Yeah, Mr. Harbor and Freight over here. Yeah. He got a <laughs> no. $1,300 worth of DeWalt tools I got it for like yeah, I got it for, like, 700 bucks, dude. Dude, that's a steal, bro. Because if you go, if you outright try to buy each individual tool, those are, like, a couple hundred bucks a fucking piece, you know? And I... Yeah. I never, I never had any, any battery powered fucking tools of my. Well, I did once, but I was, I was young, and they were given to me. I think it was a fucking uh, uh, a Ryobi set, which I'm not a fan of Ryobi. I like, I like Makita. I like fucking Milwaukee. I like Dewalt, but I didn't, I wasn't using them, so I gave them to a buddy who was building a house, like a, a tiny home, and I just let him have it because he was getting more use out of it than I was. But now, as a 33-year-old father, man, <laughs> tax-paying, <laughs> blue-collar son of a bitch from fucking central Louisiana, I, I need my own goddamn power what. tools. Yeah, I tell you what, you know, by God. But you See, know, I got all Ryobi. See, now that you... Ryobi's good. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's the cheapest, best option. It's the best, cheapest option. It is good. It's the best, cheapest option. But... No, once you see them side by side with Milwaukee or DeWalt, bro, it's like, oh shit. Do you man. ever see those videos of like? <laughs> yeah, my but De- you get your money's worth. You get your, you get your money's worth. Do on you that. see the videos where they take two fucking impacts and they fucking like lock them together and they suck the batteries and let them fucking like battle it out? Yeah, mm-hmm. I love. I'll, I'll watch that shit all fucking day, dude. But the only reason I got the DeWalt set is because I was I got that goddamn Lowe's credit card and let me I'll, get that. Hey, dude, what you need, baby? And I was like, I need something. I need something that I can really fucking use. And dude, I've used almost every tool in there. Some of the, one of the things, uh, it's like a, a, a side grinder. It's a little uh, die grinder. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I haven't used that bitch yet. Oh, uh, it just um, is it battery powered no, or no, is okay, it it's, uh, it's air not, air it's, attached? It's not the little wood cutter. It's not no no I have I have a fucking multi tool oscillator I have that too but it, it's a it's a it's a grinder but instead of having like the big grinder blade like this the grinder blade it's got is, a half moon yeah no no it's it's just a, a t tiny grinder blade and mm. it's on its side instead of down here and uh, I haven't used that yet <laughs> but I mostly use it's just either my impact my drill or the sawzall because i fucking cut some trees down my fucking sawzall dude i like the uh the battery power skill saws that both y'all have actually Mm -hmm. yours look really fucking cool and chucks i found the other day that had a little shark drone on it i was like man that's (laughs) fucking cool (laughs) like where the i guess the guard protector goes up yeah it's like a shark i like instead of writing my name on my tools i like to put art on them it's still it makes them custom and you know i don't have to just put money i like that i think i think we should excuse me i think we all see now that tools are so fucking useful mm-hmm. and i never would have thought that i'd be that guy dude i got some you need you need some tools <laughs> I'll, I'll bring my whole fucking set 
we don't we probably won't even use them, but at least we got them. It's so cool to be that to be able to be that that person though, yeah. you know, like to be able to, per, to be the person like, yeah, I got it, whatever you need, I can do, you know. There's some people that show up that are like, hey, if you need any help, I'm coming out to the, the property and I'm bringing my tools, and I'm like, oh, sweet. And then, you know, I t- I'll tell them like what I'm in- envisioning, and they'll be like, all right, I'm about to do that right now. Fuck and like yeah. within an hour or so, shout out my buddy Colby Pat- Pat- Pattinson and uh, Jesse Jones and my brother in law Kirk Chamberlain, bro. These dudes are just wizards behind saws and really? and, and and building things. Man, Hell they, yeah. can, they can throw it together. Uh, Joe Joe yeah. pulled up. I was uh. I had measured that earlier. I'm like, man, there used to be a shelf right here. So I went outside. I'm like, I just need, I just need a, a piece of wood that's a, a foot wide and 70 inches long. <laughs> and I fucking cut that motherfucker. But I've never had a fucking skill saw. I've yeah. never owned a skill saw. And I was like, that was the first time I used my skill saw <laughs> is for something for this third coast building. You know, I was yeah. like, you know what? I mean, it's a form of art, bro. I yeah. mean, it's it. Oh, dude, carpentry like, is yeah. definitely a form of fucking art, dude. Building in general, whatever you're using, uh, concrete, like whether it be steel or, you know, you're still using Legos in in a, in a weird way. Oh, well, building a a fucking concrete form mm-hmm. is precision. Yeah, it's easy to fuck up with like with with making that bitch fucking square. You can do your Pythagorean theorem mm-hmm. or the three four five on it to square that bitch <laughs> off. But it's fucking, it's super easy to fuck up. And not a lot of people, like, realize that. Yeah. Where are you, where are you going, man? Yeah, I mean, uh, but that's, I mean, there's, that's what was I've been learning out here. It's just like, because a lot of the things that we're building, you know, it's not going to, there, there's not going to be a thousand people standing on it or anything. We're not building skyscrapers or anything. We're putting, you know, small projects together. Yeah. And, and um it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. And y'all got the uh, the new stage set up outside the warehouse, right? It's a deck. A deck. We're calling yeah. it a deck. A or deck. The dock is what we're calling the it. The dock. I like yeah, that. Yeah, because it's a bay door to the warehouse, so we're I calling like it that. The, the dock of the I bay. Haven't, I haven't checked it out yet, man. This um, when I got here, I got here uh, relatively early today, and I was just uh, just trying to help Joe. Just yeah, we'll take a walk over there. We uh, we're putting in showers too, some new showers. Sweet. Um, and that's gonna be super dope. Uh, yeah, I mean, all kinds of stuff is going into uh, this year, and just kind of like we're also bettering the existing structures and just kind of putting it all together, man. It, it gets better and better every year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, working with uh, Jesse is I learned how to do concrete. Yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't. He he does all the work. I was just yeah. there passing him <laughs> shit, but I got to learn how uh, quickcrete works yeah. and how it with the moisture in the ground and stuff like that. So. It's always cool when you can go somewhere and learn something too mm-hmm. when you're yeah. helping. So, and then I noticed <laughs> I got to go back and double tap behind uh, the hardwood. I see the weeds has grown right back up. Yeah, bro. That's that's another thing that's like changed this year. Um, and not, I mean, it's been a- occurring every year. But when we first got here and mowed everything down, it was all dirt. Everything was just it was a big desert out here. And now. We prayed for grass. We were like, what if this whole place is like a golf course? And now, now too much grass. <laughs> now it is, <laughs> yeah. and, like, the grass oh, is man. just unbelievable. Uh, it's hard to keep up with. We need an army of mowers uh, at this point. But, you know, it's going to look great for the fest. And, you know, people mowers come out of the woodworks for uh, for the fest. So. I'm yeah. a weed eater. I, I go out there and zone out. Yeah. behind the But that stuff behind the Zendebo, it's like a fucking uh, – I don't know, like a big viney bush back there. So when you try to weed eat it, it oh, just yeah. tangles it wraps up. up. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I there's do. this stuff called Johnson grass that grows out here pretty rampantly, and uh, it goes from a weed to a literal stalk uh, before you know it. And uh, it's a tree, and you can't really beat them with a weed eater. You literally just got to pull them one by one. Man, I love those. Uh, I got the. Uh, the old school thing I bought uh, for my yard, I might bring out. Do you want to clear that whole area back there of that shit? I'll have to, uh, we'll have to walk over there and show me what you're talking about. I'm but sure. uh, I got one of those. It's uh, it's a kind of like a, has a wooden handle, but the blade is flat on the bottom and it branches down like that and has rigid sides. It's for like cutting big weeds. It's like a sling tool. blade. It's kind of like a sling blade. Yeah. Huh. I like those. Uh, it, they're it's like a. It's it's a blade on a weed eater. I don't know what the fuck it's called. Oh yeah, just like a hard blade on a weed eater. Fuck, dude, that is that is a fucking one of my favorite pieces of 
machinery, <laughs> whatever the fuck it's called. That, that thing, you can do so much with that, dude. Speaking of that, I'm glad that this has fell in. Um, this is advice for everybody that weed eats that I got from Jeff Lacombe. You soak your weed eater string in water for 48 hours before using it. Oh, yeah, it makes it oh, so it doesn't, like, brittle. It doesn't break. Yeah, yeah it don't break. It may, And he learned that when he was uh, like working whole, with a dude in you Texas. You put the whole spool in it? Yeah. He said that he had to take them big-ass spools and put them in a five-gallon bucket, cut a hole in the top, fill it full of water, and just string it out when he needs it. Dude, wow. the fucking... Uh, the it, wor- it works. I did. I weeded in my yard, and I used half the string I would have used before. Life hack, bro. I don't know what what brand it is that I buy a weed eater string, but it comes in, like, this fucking, like, light gray container, but the string itself is fucking lime green, but it's like a triangle. Yeah. It's fucking dope, dude. And it, it, it doesn't break, but I'm going to start soaking my shit because I didn't fucking know that. But uh, that, that type... Dude, they have all kind of weed eater string now, dude. Mm-hmm. I got an Echo. I got the thickest got one they sell at Tractor on my, Supply. On my right Echo, now. dude, we, we're going hard on some fucking power tools, dog. <laughs> dude, my fucking Echo, I ain't going to lie. It was like it was like $189. I've had that bitch for like fucking six years. Been left out in fucking hurricanes. Ain't never. It fucking fires up like a fucking gym, <laughs> dude. It's a fucking beast. And I fucking love it. Fucking love my weed eater, man. Speaking of hurricanes, Chuck, were you down in New Orleans for the hurricane? I wasn't. I was here, man. Oh. I was. I was on the boat on the on the bayou. How was how was has been uh, experiencing a hurricane on a vessel? Well, it's better than being, you know, out in the fucking water. Which uh, with that one, it was you know by the time it hit land, it was approaching a cat two. So we we would have been in anyway. The vessel would have been brought in to fucking uh, to port? safe water, well either port or uh, safe anchorage. But uh, we we right there in Amelia, which is outside of Morgan City, which is on your way to like Homa and stuff. We were uh, experiencing 100 mile an hour winds. Like the eye went straight over us. It knocked down. We have like this uh, this four three or four story walkway that you walk up, and then our gangway, and it fucking just broke that motherfucker. It it, it knocked it over. And fucked up our brand new gangway, so that has to be redone and shit like that. But um, and it fucked up a bunch of our fucking handrails. But uh, I had to taken a trip down to Homa, and there was a, uh, you know, it's the shit that you don't see on the news. Really, it's just like the devastation of trees and shit like that. But you know what? Trees never fucking bust over. Is those goddamn old school live oaks down there in South Louisiana? The big fucking plantation fucking There's oaks. There's a reason why they've been there for so they long. They don't fu- not. There's no fucking limb. You see all the other trees, and there's fucking they're just split and fucking half broke over or just laid over shit. But all those old fucking oaks, they're just they're just they're untouched. It seems like, and I was like, holy fuck. But yeah, there was there's a lot of damage down there. Uh, Morgan City got flooded and fucked up. Goes so. Uh, a bunch of buildings got fucked up and shit like that. A lot of home was out of power for a, a good little minute and shit, too. Yeah, people don't understand how it's just scary, man. And, like, even if your side of the state doesn't get hit, then you're worried about your homies on the other side of the yeah. state. Right, and like, yeah. It's just a t- it's 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 fun because you get to have like hurricane parties, but it ain't really fun when you think about it, bro. Like, it, it's because you're we're used to it down here. <laughs> we're used to being in some mm-hmm. of the shittiest you know environments that the world can offer yeah and hurricanes are definitely one of those uh, dylan's wife is she keeps fucking uh that she's from uh, west virginia and shit and she looked i think she lived in like dc and shit too and from her living down here she's been through like three or four hurricanes and she she always fucking freaks out she's like what am i gonna do i'm like fucking go get gas and start cooking because the lights are about to go out and uh, Make sure you have plenty of fucking bottles because that's the only thing we can do. Is, yeah. It's just like, oh, cook cook the expensive shit first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I feel that gives us a, a big advantage in life, too, is we know how to deal with bad situations. Yeah, I mean. And it makes us a lot more, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, not rigid. adaptable yeah something like that capable uh, i mean honestly it's really cool like the the whole cajun navy thing is like super redneck and like like 
almost funny to a certain extent, but it's really awesome, like, how the people in the South are just willing to, like, hey, I, I know how to trade water. I know how to go in a boat. I know how to, you know, we go check traps all the time. We can go help people, you know, and they just will, they're just willing to go out and help strangers because everybody knows what it feels like to, to lose everything Definitely through a yeah. hurricane. Yeah. Um, Except us up here, we're not really, you know, really like localized around a body of water and stuff yeah. like that, which you know. But we still dealt with floods and things like oh, that. Yeah, and like, yeah. Like, I, I deal with floods all the time in my neighborhood. Yeah, it sucks, bro. I mean, like nobody wants two to three feet of water in your house. You know, it's like, I I'd still take water over a fucking like a blizzard or some shit. And what's crazy that we live in a, an area where if a hurricane does hit us up this far north. Like, a lot of the insurance companies won't deal with us because we're so far north and they never really had us on their radar. That's yeah, fucked up. Yeah. That's why you or especially a lot of these people out in the country, you know, they're not in any, like, z- zones for, for that, you know? And, like, yeah. when uh, me and J- Ben Jones went and helped that lady, who's we, they, she was just out in the country, and it was one of the biggest trees I've ever seen fallen, but it was on this lady's house. And... um we showed up with our chainsaws, and we were like, holy shit, bro. Like, there's no way we can get this. With the, like, you know, there's no way that I mean, we might be able to clear some limbs, but this tree is, like, leaning on this lady's house. Massive. And it's, like, almost, I mean, it's the biggest, one of the biggest oak trees I've ever seen. And uh, so we called Yeah Trees out of New Orleans, and uh, he was like, all right, I'm on my way. Wait, wait. Oh, that guy, uh, that company came out here. Owen Walson and Will Walson. Yeah, yeah, we we met them. Yeah, yeah, trees. But uh, he came and uh, they it, they showed up like like the Avengers or like uh, the um, what's it with Chris Pratt? Um, uh, Guardians of Galaxy. It was like, it was more like Guardians of the Galaxy because it was like rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but they pulled up with all their cranes and stuff and like cleaned up this lady's house and like and and got it off their house for and and. Uh, he did it all for free. That's awesome, man. That is, and, um, that is incredible. Th- those people never forget it. I, I know they won't. I won't. I'll never forget it, and it wasn't even my house. But it was one of the coolest things that I've ever been a part of. And also, like, like felling trees, that's like a, being like an arborist and shit like that. Mm-hmm. That's a whole fucking art to it, too, man. Dangerous, bro. Super fucking dangerous. Oh, yeah. But you got to be a, a certain type to want to wanna scale a tree that's down and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Owen is, man. He's a great dude. And his dad, Will. He's the one that comes and helps us build. He's another one that uh, just knows everything. Uh, knows his way around a saw and a hammer, if you know what I mean. I need, yeah. I need a good chainsaw. You know uh, who we forgot to shout Steel, out, though? <clears throat> oh, Mr. Jed for doing the... Jed the Cornett. Arm- yeah, oh, dude. Outside. Dude, Jed, thank you so much, brother. That piece outside looks amazing. <laughs> like it makes me miss fucking drawing and being affiliated with art so fucking much. I can elaborate on the how that uh go ahead. came to yeah, fruition. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So um I made a post in Camp Void and shout out for Camp Void has been alive for seven years. Eight years. Eight years. I would hit the applause button, but mm. I might I don't oh, hey. yeah. <laughs> nailed it. Um but I made a post excuse me um in the void about we're looking for an artist to come out and do a painting on the wall like graffiti style something third coast style and i made a post and talked to a whole bunch of people and didn't expect the prices that were thrown uh Art's initially not cheap. Art's uh, not i didn't cheap. know i didn't i didn't know in that realm you know i knew it was kind of expensive but i didn't know the 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 level you know yeah. and you can't tell someone, you know, and me being like fresh, I, you know, just talk to a couple people, whatever. But Jed was the first person to message, and he was like, uh, about 12 by 12, 8 by 8, or so, something like that. And the thing, he was like, oh, da da da, money, and messaged couple, uh, two other people, and everything was around like 260, 320 mm-hmm. for one quote. And I messaged him back. I said, "Look, we gotta scale it down. We we don't which, got that type of money." Which, which that price range is still well worth yes, the art. Yes. Yeah, that's reasonable. If if not, ch- still cheap. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was like, "We want a four by four. and he was like, "Okay, cool. A uh, hundred dollars and lunch at Buddy's. I mean, <laughs> oh, Buddy's a Burger Inn. Burger Inn. Burger Inn. 
And I, I was like, okay, cool. So he went, you know, we talked, we chatted up, you know, walked around, talked about a whole bunch of shit, and he went to work. And I came back, and I'm thinking four by four. Mm-hmm. He has the whole fucking wall <laughs> covered and did all the st- all the little stuff. And he was like, oh, I'm about halfway through. I said halfway through, and I'm thinking in my head, he said $100. You know what I'm saying? He has, like, f- there's, like, five layers to it. Yes, it's beautiful. There's, it's- there's work behind and in yeah. front of work. Well, I mean, yeah. so y'all know, y'all, y'all know the initial price, so maybe, you know, at, through time, maybe just throw him a little bit more, you know? He, he, he clearly did a favor. You know? Yeah, he, yeah. He, oh, he no. He definitely no. did a fucking favor, man. Like, and and it's, it's great, incredible fucking work. And with, like, the outside... We still have like like this full panel wall mm-hmm. right here that can be done with like we, we like the idea of like different artists too, and so like that, uh, that's what Joe and I were talking about earlier. Like we just want this whole building to be submerged with different artists yeah. of the the Void family, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's something we're really looking forward to. Even like the door, I want the door to be a whole whole thing itself as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Oh, he's gonna definitely come back, and he's uh, he's down to do a show too. So, well, tell Jed uh, that we'll we'll hook him up we'll, um, if he hasn't bought a ticket. We'll, we'll we'll make sure he gets his way in if he if he wants to come. All right, I can I can relay the message. That is not a problem with me. Speaking of festivals, are tickets still on sale, or is it too late for the uh, for the goose to gander? No, man, you can still get tickets to Fed. Fuck yeah, go get and your we just, tickets. We just dropped our Saturday um, one-day passes. For $100, you can come on Saturday. Fuck yeah. And stay Sunday as well. Come on. Mm, not much happens on Sunday, but it, you can still be there. Yeah. Sunday's the the cleanup and straggle day. I like, I like Sundays. <laughs> just, it's just because it's still like a... The, it's like an intimate day after. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. All the all the like, all the homies are around. Yep, most definitely. I'm 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 super excited. It's intimate if you if you if you didn't go too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you go too hard, you wake up at one o'clock and you're like, oh, what happened last night? And which that's a that could be like a. Because sometimes people get excited and go hard the first night, and then some, and sometimes people are reserved and go hard the second night. And then there are those they just go hard the whole time. Yeah, my buddy uh, J Dub, he was like, you know what, bud? I think I'm gonna like set up a tent this year and actually like do the camping side of the. <laughs> of the <festival." laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I love you, Dub. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Shout out, Dub, man. I love it. So, this year. Yeah, what are you guys ready to see? Dude, this year. You know what I'm ready to see? Is the comedy set yeah. at, the, at the bar. At, I did. At, I, 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 yeah, I like how y'all did. Uh, y'all doing small things around some of the bars yeah. uh, on the property this year, on the the lineup. And it's just, there's so much going on in 72 hours that it just blows my fucking mind like i i cannot wait for you to see uh jesse cotton stone dude amazing ass I'm su- artist i'm super excited man i i was uh i wasn't sure of uh the, the comedy thing like it was last year but i did write some and so oh if, yeah if my, yeah I, it's it's not bad how um, long you got? A minute? Two minutes? Uh, I I think I could run it for probably three minutes. Yeah. Okay. And so and so like if my mind hasn't changed, I may do some improv, man. Let's go. So not improv. You wrote this. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Fuck improv. I'm not doing that shit. No. You're improv right now. Oh, uh, I'm a. I'm not good at it. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, if 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 my if my mind doesn't change, I could I could probably do like a couple minutes set, man. Cool. Or. I'm, I'm, I'll I'll say, I'm, I'm gonna shoot a text right now and make sure that they put you on the on the uh, set. Yeah, don't be an asshole I'm about just, it. <laughs> 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 Is Chris Drew doing uh, the set at TV? Yeah, he'll be around. Okay. Fuck yeah, I love cool. you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah, Chris um, is great. But it's just something like, like I don't know. Like I haven't been to FET in in a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? And then like I missed out last year's with the with the the new comedy introduction. And then he was telling the stories about 
you know, fucking young Gata getting up there and fucking trying his his little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, because it's always been back in uh, back in my mind because like, I've watched – I mostly watch comedian podcasts anyway. And so I like to think that I can be funny, but it is a different type of funny to do a bit or a set and project it. You know, without, you know, it's just it's just doing the thing. You know, I've never had an opportunity to, to do stand-up. Yeah, you haven't had an opportunity to bomb. Dude, I want to yeah. fucking, fucking <laughs> knock a sock. Hell yes, Fizz. 215, <laughs> check it out. I, I tried. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but that's the thing, though. Like, if you did it, you did it. I feel like I'd be a bitch if I fucking did do it. You know what I'm saying? So I, Joe fucking gave it hell, bro. It was it was, <laughs> it was awesome, bro. Dude, but, I wouldn't. I don't have the balls to do what he did, bro. You see, like, I, I, I went. For I'm kind of on the fence. I'm kind of on the fence about it. Like, I kind of want to do it. I kind of want to do it, but at the just same time, it, bro. I just, just like I was like, man, you know what? At the same time, it's like, <laughs> fuck it. I have nothing to lose. I have a. You know, come check out the podcast. Fuck it. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I do. I, 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 I say do it for sure. Especially if you want to. I'm, I've been working on it for like three weeks. Cool. So I would ask you to do some now, but we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll no, because it. it's uh, when, once it's told, it's gonna. That's gonna. The telling is then. I can't. I can't like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the the because it's a, it's a story. It's all, it's all completely true, and because that's all like I can't make up shit, and I'm not good at writing jokes, but I got too much fucked up shit that I did to myself in my life to not talk about. So it's uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it good. So that's what I got. Well, I got something for y'all. Y'all were talking about tools earlier. Did y'all know you can buy? A flame throwing robot dog for under ten thousand dollars. Come on with it. Uh, Ohio based company uh, releases the Terminator, <laughs> the first flame throwing quip robot dog, priced at nine thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. The robot can shoot flames up to thirty feet and is controlled remotely via smartphone apps. Featuring a one hour battery life, it includes advanced navigation technology like LIDR and FPV. Uh, marketed for uses and I don't understand why uh, wildfire control agriculture and entertainment flamethrowers remain largely unregulated in the US by the way except in <laughs> Maryland <not> <laughs> and California what about whatever happened to those fucking flamethrowers that Elon Musk had fucking made apparently you can still buy those too come on yeah but a flame a flame throwing robot dog that sounds like a really bad idea. Imagine you break in someone's house and you, and you see this motherfucker uh, like, Burf, and then it just fucking <laughs> catches your ass on fire. <laughs> no, no, it's just uh, compiled of a few little things, but that could, Chuck, would you buy a flamethrowing robot dog? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I well, mean, depending on the price. If I could afford it. Yeah, but do you keep it inside or outside? Bruce, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, my dog, bro. If he farts, he's it's basically like a flamethrower, bro. I'll be honest with you. Is that bad? It's, bro, it's so bad. It's basically a flamethrowing dog. Let's oh, be honest. Bruce. I still he'll think clear Bruce a room, is, bro, just like a flamethrower. <laughs> I still think Bruce's uh, Krampus is one of Krampus's fucking fathers. He's got a few illegitimate children running around Oakdale still. If anybody wants a dog, I know two of them that are potentially Bruce's uh, offspring. Uh, <laughs> Bruce getting to... around. Not anymore. He's clipped, but hey, Bruce is a good dog, though. <clears throat> and I don't think, honestly, this dog is. They look like Bruce, but it's just an Oakdale dog. There's a lot of dogs that look like Bruce around. A lot of ditch dogs. Yeah, Louisiana brown dog. Louisiana brown dog. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Man, I really can't wait for next week, dude. I yeah, really I can't, can't. I can't stop thinking about it. It's blowing my mind Hold too, up, man. It's next week, I thought it was week after next. It's next week. It's bro. next week, bro. We got this weekend, and then it's coming up next yeah. Thursday. Damn. So we got like a week and a half. Oh, that ain't bad. Not even a week and a half. Well, we already yeah. got this. This we is... got till next Wednesday to finish everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to weed eat behind the warehouse again. I, I mean, like, uh, hardwood. the hardwood again. I like that uh, that structure 
oh, I don't know what the, what the fuck you call it, that tent. Oh, yeah, we got two of those. That's fucking nice, dude. You dude got, that's uh, super fucking nice. one behind the skitter, too, right? Yeah, we got those in the Eunice auction for $700 a piece. No shit. That's fucking a steal, dude. I know, right? And so and those, are like, those are like permanent tents like we'll pull the we'll pull the fabric down just yeah be, to just to, because so it don't get sun rot or whatever yeah i mean yeah. and but but all that shit is into the ground like it's bolted behind skitter and then that one's dude those are fucking great man and like it has the metal framework yeah oh so oh yeah because you can just pull that down it's yep. kind of like uh the nursery yep. thing exactly like, yeah. yeah man yeah those those are fucking great man that's a smart idea mm-hmm and that's going to be used for green rooms for the artists, Yeah, basically right? backstage for production and artists. Yep. Just for some shade, man. It it gets uh, it gets hot out here during the day. It fucking yes. do. It gets hot. Without this uh, this uh, little AC Joe got going on in here, it'd be hot in this motherfucker. Yeah, and there's no this. windows in here, so we don't really, like, the world could be burning outside. Of, so Yeah, this is a, a very trapped place. Yeah, there's no windows, so it's like, it could be... Uh, b- sunshine and it could be uh, dark outside. We don't know. It's a good and bad thing. Probably mostly bad, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's like it's, the, it's, it's like good, the it's, casino. There's no clocks. There's no windows. Yeah, and it's right. only AC pumping. <laughs> just third coast. All you think is third, third coast. coast. Yeah. And it's I don't know when I was like when you're looking at stuff and you're putting it together and I'm climbing on the roof, connecting extension cords and connecting all this stuff and I never tested. Like I knew the shit worked. But I was like, I ain't never tested it to this day. So when I cranked up the generator, we, and then we found out it was a little just too loud uh, for in here. So that's when I cut the wall out there. Kobe's I did not mind. And um, yeah, it's yeah, just, just crazy. Quit, yeah, it's just, just quit crazy. Quit telling me about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy how, like, it all just came to be. And, like, you think that you want something to turn out good. And then now we're... 57 minutes into episode 235. Too easy, baby. Too and easy. it's cool. Yeah, we got a little background noise, but there ain't nothing the little editing can't get out. And it's just it's surreal, I guess. After all these years, we're in a solid spot, you know, in a, a solid atmosphere, a, a creative atmosphere here going forward. And it's cool. This it really is. Yeah, if we can, uh, if we can localize a... A, uh, just a breaker for out here. I'll buy the conduit and the line for it. All right. Yeah. Done. Is uh, you know, just just tell me how long you need, baby. Deal. And you know, whenever you need something weeding, you just tell me where to go, and I go <laughs> weed eat that shit. Hey, I might not can build stages. We I, always need I can, weed eating. I can cut grass. He though. needs he needs weed eating right now. Well, that's one of the cool things about having y'all here, man. Like. Like there's a podcast studio here, but you're also now like um, our caretaker. <laughs> so, so yeah, we sorry, got, we you got, got a job now. Yeah, we got keys. So yeah, we yeah, have we, to, got, we, we got have maintenance responsibilities. I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, I say. yeah, that's a good way to put it. Responsibilities. But it's for y'all to always have taken us in and looked at us as artists and given us so much through all these years. It's just, so much. It still baffles me and then when you think that y'all couldn't give us more and now y'all giving us this that's why like clearing all that working with the kids trying to get that up it's because it's like the give back i want to get this organized i mean a lot of people might look at like this scrap wood and this and that is junk like, whether you can use that and we can just move it a little bit over clear out some space it's yeah. it's and then it's good to get my kids out get them to be active too and they're they're like when's krampus you know, because the void's a little bit more grown up ish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Krampus is like the real family, good mm-hmm. stuff. You know, to bring the Bambinos, and they're real excited. They're like, when, when are we going to watch the music? Uh, is the gumbo in October? I'm like, no, yeah. just wait. That's in December. <laughs> we, we're getting close. I but, love Dude, that makes my heart warm. That's beautiful. It's just, there's, there's just so much good and just so much to be happy about right now. And Absolutely. I just don't know really how to put in words. No, you just did a great job of it, man. I appreciate you, and I appreciate y'all, man. I say it before, and I'll say it again. Y'all deserve it uh, for how much effort y'all put into this thing. And, I appreciate uh, that, so man. Thank it's, you. It's beautiful. I'm glad to be a part of it, and, you know, we feel the long same live way. Third Coast, baby. Yeah, we, we feel the same way. But we're just happy to be a part of this, man. You guys have uh, provided something. Uh, we've said it, and we'll continue to say it. You have know, provided something that was completely unheard of, and 
never really even like a a remnant of a thought that could be happening in our hometown. You know? Yeah, man. And if you're listening and you don't know what we're talking about, come to Fet Du Void. It's October 3rd through 6th, baby. Yep, come to the void. Get lost. You don't know what you might find. Might find yourself while you're here too. Yep. You might find yourself sitting behind one of these microphones. Yep. <laughs> Come through. Yeah, we got uh we have uh, nine interviews lined up. Ten. 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 Two. But two of them, uh two of the people, uh Chuck and uh goddamn Big Youngster are gonna to be together on the show. Oh so, ca- ch- you talking about uh Charlie Ray. Charlie Ray and Charlie Big, Ray and uh and Big Youngster. Yeah. They're gonna to be together on one. That's gonna be sick, man. I wish I could sit in on that one. Then we I might have, have to uh, uh, James Hudson, we have Spicy Ranch, we have Pretty Nasty. Let's see, we have Nikki Neham, we have Alyssa Price, Prince, Prince, Prince. I did that fucking, I don't know why I do That's that. Right. And who else? Shell Ramalay, yeah, Shell Ramalay. That, that's gonna be, we've been meaning to get her on now for. Since last void, we just couldn't line everything up. Shit. Um, if you guys are trying to do interviews this coming weekend, some of those people that you mentioned might be here. Come on. So really? maybe you can knock some out before void. That would be fun. I know Shell and Alyssa uh, may be here well, and uh, possibly Spicy Ranch. I'm going to Galveston Saturday and Sunday. And then Tuesday, I'm going to New Orleans, and then I'll be back Thursday. Either way, there's going to be a, a, a bunch of people coming in early, so if y'all wanted to uh, well, clear your gone, schedule a little bit. If you're gone next weekend, I can maybe squeeze in one to keep the consistent <laughs> consistency going because we took a three-week gap this time around. Hey, that's, that's, uh, that's on you. I'm, I'm, we'll figure it out after the yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm down for whatever, dude. Hold up. So I got something else for y'all. Uh, say hello to 2024 PT5, Earth's newest mini moon. So 2024 PT5 is a near Earth asteroid, and it's 11 meters in diameter, about the size of two giraffes together. Expected to go into Earth's orbit for a couple of months from September 29th, and it will depart our orbit in November the 25th. And then it returns to his orbit around the sun. So, so it'll, be, it'll be brighter than a star? Like, it'll be like the other moon? It'd be a secondary moon. Dude. Uh, it will be so close. It will also come very close to Earth, where you can actually see it one day in the months, which will be... Uh, well, no, this won't be in this time. It's going to pass by January 9th of 2025. It'll be the only time you can see it by the naked eye. But... With this mini moon orbiting around the Earth uh, from September 29th to November 21st, it's a magnitude of 22. It's way too faint to be seen by the naked eye or even by a powerful backyard telescope. Only astronomers use large professional 30-inch telescopes will be able to see it. Mm. So, yes, we do have like a mini moon, which is just an asteroid. But it's kind of weird, though how it's going to come into our gravitational pull of the earth fucking exit. <laughs> go all the way to the sun yeah yeah so i mean i'm just glad it's not hitting us bro that'd be um two giraffes would take out the at least the country yeah it would definitely be that's big astro i mean they've been developing stuff for years and they've tested some things but like the end of the world for like asteroids actually happening i mean fuck it already happened with the dinosaurs so allegedly <laughs> well the the they said i met a guy who doesn't believe in dinosaurs and he's lucky i'm still his fucking friend so there <laughs> there was an asteroid that hit one of jupiter's moons that was twice the size of the asteroid that uh extinct uh ex- killed all the dinosaurs hey there's some wild shit going on with fucking jupiter too man <laughs> but just to say that asteroids are in our galaxy that big hitting other shit and you're like damn dude the galaxy be galaxy and <laughs> but it's just a weird thought that everything <laughs> at in one second can go poof, gone oh, yeah. gone yeah i mean i guess since they know that they when they enter our orbit uh they would they would know for uh, like we probably know for like a few weeks maybe or like like a couple uh, at least a couple of days or whatever. Yeah. 
That it wouldn't be, be wild, long. bro. What would y'all Just, do? Well, I think they what have. I? I think they have. <laughs> What would y'all do if we had two days? Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> the world the world would go on fire. I am I don't think I would do cocaine. I feel like it would it would make everything go by quicker. Like maybe like some acid. Yeah. Something like some that. Some mushrooms, yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Then again, that would be really trippy. I'm gonna start cooking. I think I don't know. knowing that the world's gonna come to an end is pretty trippy all in itself. You'd start cooking? Yeah. Uh, yeah, last meal will be good. You yeah, want to be I'm ready gonna, for I'm that. Gonna, I'm gonna eat so good yeah. until then. Honestly, we'd probably just have the void and just just hey, everybody just come to the property, bring, bring all your stuff. Yeah, everybody, everybody, we're having carnival until the end of the days. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds perfect. <laughs> no, it would probably be total chaos, and we'd probably have to fend for our lives. It'd be hysteria. Yeah, it would be bad. I mean, but two days though, it's not like hey, the end of the world's happening. And we got years, so you got to fend for yourself. And like, it's just like hey, we all know it's happening in two days. And then everybody, I feel like everybody's partying down here. Yeah, if it's like completely inevitable, <laughs> I don't think anybody's. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd be wanting to be around too many people. If, if it was like for sure, people are letting doubt, all their inhibitions go and doing whatever, literally. Yeah, if the, if no if, rules if, seems, if, seems like it would be anarchy. If they couldn't deflect it, I'll, I'll, I'll probably set my car the, on fire. They they have tested uh, the dart system and they have deflected an asteroid and changed its trajectory. But with these big, massive ones, could they do? It? One thing I'm saying is like an asteroid that can. Destroy the world is an immediate threat. Dude, we've seen and Armageddon. And we, we rather, human race, rather build weapons to kill each other uh, than we're gonna, protect the whole planet. We're but gonna, I'm just saying. We're going to need uh, Ben Affleck, Bruce Willis, Steve Buscemi. We're going to send them to outer space, and then they're, they're going to blow up a rock, and then it's going to, you know, hunky-dory. Speaking of wild shit, so, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm trying to squeeze some of these in here. Uh, Die and Doritos... Using uh, was using an experiment like a magic cr- uh, trick, creating see-through mice. Researchers at Stanford University detailed September 6, uh, and journal scientists they were able to use uh, bright yellow, orange food coloring that is used in Doritos and other foods, drugs, and cosmetics. After testing the dye on the mice tissue samples. The researchers rubbed the dye and water solution on the skulls and abdomen of these said mice. As the dye was absorbed by the mice, a few minutes later, their skin, their muscle, and connective tissues were transparent in the live rodent. Whoa. Damn. So we can have Hollow Man? So the, the dyes that they're using in Doritos are changing. It can change the make. Rats transparent. It d- makes their pigment disappear. Yeah. Can it do that to us? It'd be pretty good. You can see my organs. Like, like you see my up. liver. Help! <laughs> <laughs> it's Help. like trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. You know, like, uh, there's a whole bunch of, like, stuff coming out, like, with Skittles and just the, the preservatives that they put in food mm-hmm. that is the just mind-blowing. Yellow number five. The dyes, yeah. yeah. Zinc that, That's, that's what mainly dyes. what it is, is the dyes to change the color, but also to preserve it so it lasts longer on the but shelf. Then the, the, the red, a lot of people are allergic to, like, the red 40 and shit, too. Yeah. But then that's kind of like smoking cigarettes. Like, there's people that die of lung cancer every day, but I know at least ten people that have smoked my whole entire life that are perfectly fine you know and they the, For now. The, the last person i know that was a heavy smoker died at like 85 mm-hmm. and then you have people dying of lung cancer from secondhand smoke at 17 19 and but stuff. a lot of times it's probably not even secondhand smoke it's probably like breathing like asbestos or like some oh they're crazy. crushing the yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like lit working at a plant no no offense to anybody that works at plants yeah. but like you know like that's no, that's a real thing because we have la- they have labels on old stuff because they're upgrading the plant i work at mm-hmm. and it has uh warnings that you can't there's certain areas like i, I do a lot of, like the cleaning mm-hmm. at work sometimes and there's certain areas that we can't touch or clean that mm-hmm. just gets piled with shit because of the the piping that yeah. they use it it's has like yeah it has some shit you in gotta, it you, you gotta wear a sniffer 
we don't touch them at all. They're they're trying to clear it out. Oh, like, you, well, yeah, it's probably it, it has like is. the warning. So it's like you clean this you clean this one little area, right? And then you have this area that's just dirty as hell, but you can't touch it because it has the it's, piping and stuff it has that cancerous old material in it's, it. It's asbestos, and like if the only way, because like the uh, I forgot who does it or whatever. It's that white shit. Like it's, it's asbestos. They used to use it as an insulator. It's like white and yellow. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I think asbestos looks like fucking fiberglass. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Well, that's kind of. But it it's, can still be airborne, like because like the the particles or whatever. So it has to be so many parts per million for you to be because like you can work around asbestos as long as uh like they read it as. You know, like one to so many parts per million. Otherwise, it because that's what because uh, it's a uh, methyl, uh, mesothelioma. That's yeah. what that's what that is. Is being sick from uh, asbestos because you're inhaling it and it gets in your lungs and causes cancer. That's and probably shit. what we're gonna get from hanging out in this room. Probably. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. I see fucking maybe, maybe nothing, mo- there's a little bit wood. of mold. I mold see wood, <laughs> wood, and hey, like. Are we going longer? Huh? I'm pee if we're going longer. Anyway. Yeah, we go a little bit longer here. Yeah. Hold up, which take one? A, that, two, take it a fiber. Two. It's two. Well, look, I got, I got to, I got to go too. Take a fiber. All right. Hold up. Yeah, I've been holding it here. And we're back. That was a most needed little little break we had there. Yeah, got a. Relieve the pressure sometimes, I guess you would say. Speaking of leaving the, uh, relieving the pressure, so I had told you a while back that we had came across an article on the boat about um, your nuts could taste things. Yeah. You, you remember that? Yeah. Well, I put that theory to the test with, like, a cup of soy sauce and uh, Wait. nothing. So you you dipped your, your testicles and yeah. soy sauce. I left my nuts in a fucking cup of soy sauce for almost 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Almost 10 minutes. Almost. Uh, so 8 minutes. About 7, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around this one. Bro, are you serious? So, like, one of one of my dear, <laughs> dear, dear friends, a brother of mine, one of my actual officers had read me this article, and I thought he was just, like, pulling my dick because he knows that, like, I'll do something stupid. I'll, I'll fucking do it. Let me just say, let me just say, before we started, after, before the break, or after the break, Jacoby goes, do you have anything you want to mention? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, but that's what he had. Yeah. Oh, he yeah, was ready. I, yeah, just for your FYI. <laughs> so, in this in this article, it, it goes on to say that there's, there's types of whatever the fuck on your nutsack that mimics taste buds. In your mouth, <coughs> I can see that. And then I went because I don't because this dude he's, he's like a, one of my best friends, so I I can see, understand where he'd be fucking with me. But he showed me the article and I read the article, and it's supposed to be from like uh, like tangy substances or like sour substances. And I was like, oh well, what better choice for me to try this than with soy sauce? Well, I had forgot <laughs> to do it for months. Just so you know, I just Googled it real quick, and I, I just said, can you taste things with your testicles? And it just says no. Well, maybe I should have just Googled <laughs> no, it. No, you cannot taste things with your testicles. Well, while, I, while testicles do have taste receptors. That's it, yeah. They're located inside the testicles and are not connected to oh, the So sauce. you should have cut I need, I need so to put not, soy they're, sauce they're, inside my ball well, they're not, And they're not connected to the brain's receptors. Oh, well, see, I should have just did my research. But I've been putting it off as a gag for a long time. Like, you know what? I'm dumb enough to fucking put my nuts in soy sauce. Well, I did it. And to no avail. You cannot taste with your nuts. You're basically a scientist, bro. Yeah. I did it. I did it for the betterment of, I wouldn't say mankind, but for Ju- mankind. <laughs> Jacoby for Third Coast, Third Coast Research. Yes, yeah. For Third Coast Research, I, you, you know what? You get nothing out of it, kids and fellas and ladies. Whoever has balls, don't do it because it's just He already so did it for you. Yeah, it's a waste of time. 
and a waste of soy sauce. Perfectly good soy sauce. So I just wanted to, you know, give you that little tidbit of knowledge. Jacoby's sashimi. <laughs> And spicy webos, I guess. Yeah. Very spicy. No, fucking soy sauce ain't spicy. It's a uh, uh, salty. Salty. Yeah, it's very salty. I don't know what salty is in Spanish, actually. <laughs> you know how they get head. when you get a sushi roll, they give you the wasabi and they give you the little ginger on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ginger, the ginger's there to actually uh, clean your palate between <laughs> tasting different sushis. Or <laughs> to put his nuts in your sushi or in your soy sauce. <laughs> I mean. Well, sea urchin, like uni, is the sea urchin's actual like reproductive organ, and people eat that. So, if you want to taste this motherfucker's uni, well, people eat mountain oysters, and that's bull nuts. So, hey, hey, I have a cane that's made out of a bull penis. Really, dude? Mm. You guys ever seen a fucking raccoon's dick? No. uh... <laughs> No, well, I haven't I have seen a, a raccoon, <laughs> but I do have a funny story they, at work. They actually we have, have a, like they actually have a like a curled bone for a fucking pecker. I don't. Know, I feel like that's what your dick looks like. <laughs> Put a little twist in there, like double twist. Explicit for the listeners. Literally hitting a G spot because I'm having to fucking curl in that motherfucker. Anyway, look, what's that? What, look, what is uh, that? I, look at that, that orange thing on that fucking poster right there. A little corkscrew. <laughs> Actually, fucking uh, some ducks have corkscrews for fucking dicks. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like a cat penis. Cat penises are like, the, the like drill. barbed. Yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, it's horrible. Speaking of dicks, what, we, what, what were you gonna we, say, Joe? <laughs> I'm lost now. <laughs> <laughs> Animal penises. I digress. I apologize. No. <laughs> All I see I'm trying is, not to now. Is, I'm trying. <laughs> All I see is dicks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of super bad now. Oh, we can't leave this episode out mm. without uh, <laughs> talking a little bit of shit like a thousand bottles of lube and oh, 783 dildos. Thousand Man, bottles come of on. lube on the wall. <laughs> Take one down. Pass it Pass around. Pass it to Justin Beaver. <laughs> 999 bottles of baby oil on the wall. I'm just like, it's just... So, like, I was, I was scrolling through fucking Instagram, and this dude put up as, like, a fucking, like, scale of it through, like, a computer, a computer modulator. <laughs> And it's like, this is what a thousand bottles look like. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could you imagine the person finding that? Like, like, what are you? Do, 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 do. I'm just like, okay, I can understand maybe like ten bottles. Because, you know, you, would, you, got, you got backup. You know what I'm saying? You always have backup. But, dude, a thousand? It's That's like, like a, a, a P. Diddy party right there. <laughs> The P. Diddy party, after party, and the after after party getting ready for the next party. I'll tell you one thing. The internet is will always be undefeated because they tear motherfuckers up. <laughs> and I have watched so many shorts of people making fun of the P. Diddy shit that it's... Well, dude, he does it for himself, bro. All the, all of his interviews now, they're just coming, like, the Mike, resurfacing. And, like, have you seen the Mike Tyson one? Yeah. <laughs> like, Mike, he puts it, P. Diddy puts his hand on Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson grabs his hand mid-interview like this. and <laughs> Pushes like, it away. <laughs> pushes it away, and then readjusts as far away from him like this. Like, this motherfucker is touching well, me, bro. <laughs> well, they, it's, it, he, he, basically what he is is, like, and uh, he's Ep- he's another Epstein, basically. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah he's, they they called him before. Uh, I mean, it took a long fucking time, but, but still, but ev- yeah. And everybody it took went. Too long. Everybody went exactly. to his parties, and everybody knew of his parties. Yeah, they made a parody uh, commercial for Diddy parties. It had like Fat Joe in it, and uh, it wasn't Mariah Carey, but it was it was another another singer and a couple other people. And we're talking about oh, when you go to a Diddy party. You're basically getting ready for the next Diddy party, but this, this, that, whatever. It was all supposed to be like a joke, or whatever. It was on MTV, but when since all this shit came to surface, and you you see these things, you're like, that shit's all fucking true. You know what the scariest part about the whole thing is, though, is the ability that money, yeah, and power can cover and fame can cover for so long and everybody's like oh they finally got him oh they finally got Jeff uh, Epstein they finally got uh, the Maxwell lady too but you're looking at 
these motherfuckers enjoyed that shit for 20 to 30 plus years of just yeah m- m- controlling everything and it's like oh yeah y'all got them now but all that that trauma and shit that they done to these people for 30 plus mm-hmm. years is never going to go away yeah is never no, going mean, to go away half their life life is over you know i mean and a lot of people's like oh well they finally got him i mean he lived comfortably doing horrible shit for 30 fucking years in his prime time so now he's late in age and he's going to spend prime time under maximum security lockdown where they cater to these people because but, they're you know because just, of their status because they can't live in general pop yeah. you know they're going to go to a special facility uh-huh. And be catered to, and then they're gonna still have all that money, even though yeah they got they're in jail and stuff. But like P Diddy, R Kelly, they're always gonna have money coming to them yeah. because they're always gonna have their music out. You but, think people stop listening to R Kelly's music? But dude, no. it's, it's yeah, I believe I can fly, bro. That's a fucking banger. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It is a good song. It is a I'm good just song. saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but no, what I'm what I, I think. People say, oh, the world is a terrible place, but really it's just, it seems like a terrible place because things like that are coming to light. So I think that even though, yeah, they have power and they'll be, you know, they're not going to get max punishment or whatever, but the fact of the matter is, is ain't so many people going to be going to a P. Diddy party uh, anytime soon, is all I'm saying. So, So, like, and, like, those type of things are coming to light these days because you can't hide... You can't live a sketchy life because everybody's out in the open these days, you know. And if you do, you have to do go through even more extreme measures, like, and like Diddy and all these things are, are happening from extension of the '90s and like when we grew up, and like that was like the first start of of the social media boom and like the like the internet wave of of news and how you got information. And everybody has a voice now. <clears throat> exactly. So yeah. so and people are speaking up. You know, you got the Me Too movement, which was you know you know take it or leave it it was still a, a, a monumental that was um, from harvey weinstein right it was from uh some a famous actress came out um and saying saying that she was um sexually assaulted and uh and and just and it was like a hey me too like i was also sexually assaulted yeah, yeah, and, then, like, yeah. and then it was like it blew up on twitter like with just everybody saying when or like you know how they were sexually assaulted and and it was a big movement because so many people that you wouldn't have thought had been sexually assaulted were actually were so that's what made the the whole um basically trend blow up and um but it brought to light how you know how many people have been you know disrupted in that way you know it's it's, it it affects people in in horrible ways and things like this are going to continue to happen like Mm -hmm. it's just going to like more things are going to come to light yeah and i think that's a good thing you know most definitely at at the same time it could be detrimental to people who uh, are innocent you know it's like a whole other aspect of it you know like there's people in this world that know that they can use that to bring certain people down in in a way you know that they can be detrimental to their careers and things like that so that's like also a double-edged messed up uh side of the whole um conviction aspect of of the me too movement and things like that so i mean it's just it's just such a touchy subject yes. you know because like who's really telling the truth and like you know it, it's just it's supposed to be handled in in such a such a careful way it's n- not easy you know i'm glad i don't have to you know be a judge you know, a jury whatever oh speaking of that uh china big shout out to china love you um she got jury du- selected for jury duty she's oh. like oh my god she's like what is this jury duty do I, am i going to jail i was like no <laughs> i was like no it's if you jury. don't go you will <laughs> uh, i was like it's jury duty just go in there and say that you you just don't feel confident in the case just and you find you have, just, just tell me you, you exposed to somebody with covid there you I, go, folks. I told her just to bring uh, Maya the in there. <laughs> bring Maya in there. Be like, this is my autistic daughter. And let her scream for a little bit. And be like, okay, you're good to go. Hey, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> or just... Yeah, I mean, um, jury duty. This Fun day times. and age, now, like, you can still use COVID to your advantage. You just say I was exposed, and they're like, you're excused. They don't even ask questions. 
There you, you know, go, kids. Good old, the good old C word. Stay exposed. <laughs> Stay exposed. Stay exposed. Well, yeah. well, X I mean, I X guess we're all ex- exposed Mother technically. Fucker. Got that. I, got I got, that bid, I got something for y'all. What so else you got on them papers? Uh, I got one big story, but I'll leave that for another time. I got one little short thing. Automatic ammunition vending machines have been recently installed in several grocery stores across Oklahoma and Alabama. Fuck yeah, dude! So you can buy ammunition from vending machines now. How does that work? Don't you have to be uh, of age? Yeah, you. Uh, you have to show you your ID. Sh- it scans your driver's license, uh-huh. and then if you're of age, you can. Well, how come you can't do that for twenty fours and shit? I have no idea. But I feel like alcohol should have been the first thing that that they. But then again, I guess that makes sense, bro. Like certain places you go, and they they sell deer corn, like and like at an automatic feeder, and like, I don't wonder what kind of ammunition, it's like shotgun shells. Or like, uh, it's like it didn't give no details I think, on I it. Think just it's said all firearms. Yeah, I think it's yeah, like, but I doubt they're selling AR ammunition at a uh, at the. Um, well, yeah. They're probably selling like the basics, probably yeah, like pistols, bullets. shotgun shells, yeah, yeah. stuff to hunt with. I would assume. Yeah, said. lead, steel, probably mostly that. Bird shot, yeah, shit like buckshot, I mean, shit you, like that. I don't know. You may you can still get fucking two two. Cause yeah, like, it didn't give the specifications. Of, a, a it just said they were selling ammunition. A lot of deer rifles are two twenty three, and then like the ARs, they uh, shoot two twenty three and five five six. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then there, uh, you have you know guns that are universal that can sh- uh, the ARs that can shoot both two twenty three and five five six. So, I don't know. It's always weird. It's a lot of people because I was in the army. Everybody thinks that I would have like be like gun hoarder it's just like it's not the same well the, it's the same feeling it's like look it's safe but it's also a way to regulate yeah so i mean do y'all think i mean i i'm i'm an i'm an american just as much as anybody you else. better be american on this podcast i'm just kidding but <laughs> it's just like what do y'all think about ass, assault assault podcast. assault weapons you know like do you, do you think that there should be a ban on assault weapons. Not saying, Ooh. hey, there there should be a ban on on shotguns or pistols or, or like you know s- self defense weapons. I think there should be stricter laws. But ARs, like yeah. yeah, it should be completely. It should be classified as a different type of gun. Yeah, I, I don't think it. Um, I don't. With I don't think it should be as easily obtained as it is. I think yeah. you have to go through a really like extensive, you know. Oh, you know, it's just. It's just yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the, like there's a certain group of weapons that are used in in American hunting for birds and deer and things like that. And then there's home protection, and, and then there's home protection, and there's military weapons. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like military weapons should not be on market for civilian use. Yeah. Okay. That's oh, that's that's heavy. That's oh, a heavy okay. statement, bro. <laughs> to well, I mean, why would it? Why, uh, why, why, I mean, like, but see, then you you. You, but then they're taking away your guns. Guns, <laughs> but that that, I, that I, goes I, back to my. my I'd be goddamn. They take my fucking arms. But that's that's back to the age old argument that I've always brought up with guns and being in the military myself. It doesn't matter. Thank you, by the way. What type of gun that I can buy? You can buy AR-15 shotguns, sniper rifles. Yeah, you can keep stuff at bay. What happens if an Abrams tank comes down? Fucking uh, 165. You know what I'm saying? What is my AR-15 going to do to that? So when I when I see people argue about like taking guns and stuff, I believe that we have we should always have the right to bear arms. But I believe that we should have specific. If you want an AR-15, you need to go through, like, you're not going to go to, like, because I have kids in school, and they just went through a drill last week for, like, people coming in and shooting up the school. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And. Because it can happen in any town. And in America, these are kids say, that are yeah. shooting up schools. These are 17, 18, 16-year-old yeah, kids with fully younger. automatic uh, assault rifles yeah. killing kids. Yeah. And I believe that there should be stricter measures. You should be able to have it if you There should be you, there should you, be somebody at the school with an AR, but it shouldn't be the kids. <laughs> Orm the teachers in my opinion. <laughs> hey, I fuck with that. Yeah. yeah. But you, you should but, yeah, they you there should, should have be license. Somebody, they, you should yeah. go through courses yeah. and because an AR when you get to that level, that's all peer uh like the sportsman thing to it. Yeah. Because unless you're going to fight 
you know, war or something. You you don't need an AR-15 to kill doves or deer or anything. And that's look, purely on like the sportsman side. And but. I th- I think if you you have a, an AR or a military weapon that's registered to you right now, I don't think that the government should come into your house and try to take it from you. No. I think there should be a grandfathered situation in if you have one that's fine but we're not going to be selling any more to anybody else uh, like you know what i'm saying like that way they're not taking your guns and all the old people that would freak out about that can still keep theirs see, but uh, we're not going to be selling them to any uh, like kids anymore or any, anybody else you know like see, I, unless I, unless you go through these strict strict requirements yeah, i the, get that and that resonates because like but what, they go into what, these, they, what is the use are you taking that ar deer hunting you can. Well, but I what think is the I, what is the primary I think use? The primary use for these people to, to for anybody that I know that they have one of these in their in their closet is because they're like one day, one, one day, one day I'm one gonna, day. I'm gonna need this. One thing. day I'm gonna need one day it. the shit's gonna hit the fan and I'm gonna need this thing. And those those type of people are older and like definitely in the, more prevalent in the south but there's definitely people like that what we call preppers yeah they're in they're all over the country you know all over the world probably but mainly in the US because i feel like we have uh, the ability to prepare for anything like that we you got know the and that's right, fun we got the but right I feel to bear like, arms. i feel like the peop- the families that want to have that and and that already do look we're not trying to go take that because what will happen is is, is another civil war yeah Period. Now, either that or a lot of people are going to die uh, by the hands of the military because you're not going to win that battle. No, that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't. y'all can't. We as civilians in the in America, we can't buy mortar rounds. We can't buy yeah. seven. Uh, but we can you buy know fucking... the artillery. We don't have aircrafts. We don't have nuclear weapons. We don't have yeah, radar. We, they which... can hack into every phone in yeah. America right now if they want to. Yeah. It's the false repens- yeah, representation you, that you have something like. Just because you watch Fox News and, and you and you got a bunch of ammunition stacked up, bro, they can still come and take it if they wanted to. But they're not going to. And, and like that's that's the compromise that we need to have, to have in order for our kids to, keep, to stop getting murdered, bro, in school, bro. And then also you can, you can uh, leave – you can teach and show and – because – that's a weapon. It's a discipline to have it, and mm-hmm. I think it's so it's so open for everybody to have it. So it causes that. Now, no matter what laws you put out there, people are going to still die by it. People are homicides, suicides, yeah. all that shit is still going to happen. Yeah. But what the idea is? What can we do as and and, and to regulate it a little bit ki- so it don't happen so and much? And kids, I guess. Are, kids are going to probably still try to bring weapons and shit yeah. to school. But let's be honest: Would you rather them having However many rounds are in AR, how, you probably know how many. Uh, yeah, depending actually, on, it, what clip, depends on what clip it is, yeah. uh, usually about the 30, smallest, 29, The smallest, one, smallest one is like 30, whereas, you know, if a kid brings a shotgun to school, they got three shots before they have to reload, and that's plenty of time to, to eliminate the situation. You know? Well, it like, depends on the shotgun. They could take their fucking parents' or home even a nine, shotgun. Or even a nine-round clip is less than 30 rounds, you yeah, know? And like, yeah. I think a lot of it boils down to is like, and then, like recently with the last shooting that happened, the parent, the dad, is facing all the same charges because yeah. he bought the AR as a gift for his like 16 year old mm-hmm. son, and he's facing worse charges Good. than the son. And I think that's a great thing because, yeah. like, if my son, if you if you're paying attention to your kids and your kids are troubled and they have problems going on and. Like here recently with my uh, middle son Nicholas, we had a, like a little thing with him arguing with Alyssa, and it's a lot of just he feel he felt left out on a lot of things, so he would bring it down and start arguing with his sister instead of talking about it, and that stuff like kids that emote that raw emotion that they have you can't you can't check it sometimes sometimes it it goes rampant and you gotta catch it afterwards. Where in my house, like a lot of people think, oh, I was in the military, I should have a whole bunch of shit. I got one pistol in my house. That's mm-hmm. it. One pistol, lock and key. And I mean, I do have fucking uh, Ormer Pearson rounds in my pistol, but that's all I need to protect my house. Because that's after that, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Like, you, we have castle law, but if you shoot someone seven times, 
in your house if they're robbing, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your yeah. life for, for fucking o- manslaughter. O- overkill, yeah. yeah. I, I think that eventually what's going to happen is like a, like a, a justification of – if you have registered firearms, you are going to be required to keep them within a safe inside your domicile, and which that's not technically a bad thing because we all grow up. We all grew up in households, so we're like, we have firearms locally accessible yeah, just for it, home invasion ag- purposes. Again, though, that'll never work because you it, can you cannot go into somebody's house and and tell them where to put their guns. I know it, it, like, won't it won't work, won't, but that'll be that'll be. Along the lines of the idea that they're going to try to project to, to mitigate these problems. Again, I, I don't think that you can mitigate the issues of, of the guns that are already out there. What I you think, don't, they don't know what guns what are I th- out there. What I think it, it would help is the fact that any 18-year-old can go into the uh, – uh, they're basically treating them like carnivals, these gun shows, where there's just assault rifles and uh, – Military weapons just all over these under tents, and, and people all are just that, selling them. And you, all you have to have is an ID. That's private sale. It's insane. Yep. It's, it's all, insane. Every gun show is private sale. You don't have to have any paperwork on none of those firearms. It's all private sale. That's, it blows my mind that they. That, to where, and, and then they're wondering like, the, why is this happening? I go you know? to the pawn shop. I have to do fucking like paperwork, and then wait to get this. I have to wait for a background check to clear to get this firearm. Where this fire, I don't even know who had this firearm to begin with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a it's a uh, it's a double edged sword, a catch twenty two. It's a fucking. There's got to be some give and take, you know. Yeah. Like pe- the people that are like, they're not gonna take my guns. We don't need any gun more gun laws or anything like that. Those people are literally ignoring the fact that that yeah. that kids are dying. You know, like they're just like. Like anybody that fights care. the NRA, they're just like uh, totally against them, and like you know. I just feel like we there's got to be some common ground. Like that's a that, lot of you know? that's a lot of thing in in society now. It's left or right. I'm right. You're wrong. You're wrong. I'm right. And mm-hmm. no one wants to meet in the middle. And, and that's a lot of the the problems that we face. Well, it's a lot of the biased media too that oh, yeah. that that does that. You know, and and, um, because a lot of people are uh, like you know. There's some people that are, that say I'll never watch anything that says Fox News on it. Not even sports. And then there's some people that say, I only watch that, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, you know, uh, that's the issue. You're only getting your your information from one avenue, and it's these news media outlets that are owned by these big monopolized corporations. Look at, uh, look at, oh, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, we, we went to school with him here, his fucking uh, nephew. He had a gun on the fucking, on the fucking, uh, the, what is it? The uh, the table in the living room. Oh yeah, yeah. That. And then you know, why was their gun accessible to a toddler or a young kid like that? You None know? of them got charged for it either. Nothing. You know? Nothing got done. And that's just that's just like a part of the problem. Another part of the problem is like the bullying in the school system. You know, uh, like the 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 kids that uh, are are mistreated in the system. Bad parenting. It, it, there's there's a lot of there's bro, a there's a lot of everything. Bullying has been around since yeah. so long, bro. Like I, I, I get it that like we should parents should treat their kids to be nicer. Yeah. No excuse for some for a kid to be able to come no. to school with a fucking assault rifle. Yeah. But but like, to bullying a, has been around for a long time. If anything, it needs to happen sometimes, bro. Like, there's some kids that need to be fucking bullied. <laughs> no offense. Well, no, I, no, I, that no, was a, that no, was a no. joke, but at the same time, bro, like, like that should like it should not be an option for these for kids there's to come to school never and an want to murder somebody. Yeah, there's never an excuse. like that. That yeah. is a whole other deal, bro. Like, like but that's, my dad was bullied. I was bullied. Like his dad was bullied. It's been around a long time. Bro. I was definitely bullied. <laughs> I was, dude. I was on the hand of bullying. You know, like it's 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 a thing that's in school. It's always going to be there. What we but need to stop in school is but guns that's weird and, though. And murdering, is, even though, like, shit, back in the day when we grew up, you could fight. You could get three fights. Uh, you could just get suspended after three fights. They expelled you, so everybody would be like, "Okay, third one, I ain't fighting nobody yeah. else." But it just seems like I when I with my kids and I see the stuff they deal with and the stuff I dealt with as a kid, I'm like. Even the worst part of, like, dealing with some of the bullying in my life, I never... 
thought about no. you know what I'm saying like you know what fuck all these motherfuckers you know it never it never crossed my mind and it's just weird that that's a, an avenue that some kids find is that you what know? was your what was your worst bullying experience hmm I think when I was in middle school probably that's probably when like my peak bigness happened and uh Never forget it. Luke Tarver made fun of me saying I wobbled. And Fucking then me Luke. and Luke. Yeah. yeah right. It was like, <laughs> wobble, wobble, <laughs> put your back into it. And then me and him got in a big ass fucking fight out on in the middle school yard behind God his God damn it, Luke. Hey, we ain't bleeping out no names, bro. Yeah. No, no. Fuck that dude. No. <laughs> for for Luke, that moment man. in life, fuck him. And then now his, his, he's, his he's, wife is one of the teachers for my daughter, which Jesse. helps her. I yeah, went to, Jesse. I went, I went to school. And I grew she, up with Jesse. She helps my daughter and stuff. And uh, we went and did the uh, parent teacher conference. And she's like, "Oh yeah, you know my uh, my husband Luke." And I was like, in my head, I'm like, "Yeah, that yeah, motherfucker that right son there, of a bitch. He's the reason why I went to the track for fucking all summer long, running that motherfucking hey, hotel track." Hey, but listen to that, bro. Like. It no, like, no, no. I mean, it sounds it, like it, he helped you. No, I mean, in a way, like in a, in way, a way, yeah, in a way. But I, I took it out like you know what? I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to look you know, like that no took more. It, so it took I it mean, as an opportunity it, to better you. So yeah, I mean, the scrap and then like <laughs> go go work off this weight. But I mean, everything has a give and take. But it does yeah. bullying does have an effect. But along yeah, I'm not trying. You I'm not trying to advocate. Yeah, I'm not like, trying to advocate. Yeah, because bullying bullying comes from like a a. Uh, usually usually comes from a troubled or traumatized person that projects onto yeah. others because they're a product of their own self uh, self environment yeah. that they live in you know and it's yeah. not self inflicted but they they that's what they know and so therefore that's what they do onto others yeah which that is real you can't negate that yeah. you can't you can't that that's always going to be there and it's always going to happen mm-hmm. you can't say Oh, let's fight this because you are fighting a losing battle. A fucking uh, a kid that suffers in a scenario, it's not his his or her fault, mm-hmm. you know. And that's just the, the world we live in, you know. Not everything's perfect, for, no, sure, for sure damn sure. But the times is, have changed, man, to where you know it's uh, that's just an unfortunate option that kids have these days. Like, uh, all right, I'll show this motherfucker. He ain't gonna call me fat again, <laughs> you know. Like, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, See, that, uh, what fucked me up really? His kids go to Elizabeth, mm-hmm. and you know that's where I grew up mostly. Mm-hmm. What was it last year or year before that? There was a fucking uh, uh, year before that. They br- uh, some kid brought a, a pistol to school. Never in my fucking life I ever would have thought. That that would happen at that fucking school. Yeah, I I, 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 I disagree because that's it's like a it's a, it's a private school, but not a private school. It's just where well, it's, uh, just, it's where people yeah. people bring their kids. It's a t- no, no it, offense, it, Joe, but no, it's, but it's, it's yeah, like yeah. It's, a, it's it's a place to bring your kids to have less of a distraction um, and like a, a supposedly a better education uh, and supposedly. Uh, a safer spot, but uh, but what yeah. you have, what you have. That's Hopedale's private school, as Uncle Thomas was saying. Exactly, dude I work with it's Hopedale's private school. And look, I, I mean, mean I what happened when you is what it is. I just, I, mean, I just, like, it's a, it's a res- reverse effect of what the parents want. Yeah, you know? I just it's, like it's, it's I always ends up. Happening. I went to school there my mo- like literally my entire life, and then you know as for like what. We're, we, it's been noticeable for like the past 15 years you see it in the media all of these and now it's be, it's become such a stigma it's not it's it's not even like I, I won't say it's not news no more but you hear it so much about school shootings or this and that or whatever but being in that small community it should, it just seems so surreal because it happened there you know because of a, uh, it's just a, a, a small place it can happen anywhere. It can happen anywhere, and that's why I was just like, it just it just shocked me. I was like, no fucking way. We'll just you know, we got to keep bringing the love and, uh, and 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 spread it. You know, bring love, hit kids. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, boys. Okay, <laughs> I gotta go too. <laughs> um, let's get into 
the artist of the week go by. All right, I got this. And then we do words of wisdom. All right, we're, we we're, ch- we're checking out fucking parallel, parallel threads established uh, 2022. The excited new jazz funk collaboration out of New Orleans fusing classic vibes and eclectic international influences. The band features saxophonist Ole Odlokin. Ole Odlokin. I'm so, so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, guitarist Jake Helston, Shout bassist Jake. Joey Laborde, and Eric Brown on drums. The composition wrap you and up Eric. in a warm, relaxing blanket of sound while others take you on soaring to the sky and back down again. Perfect for appreciators of the roots music, heavily psychedelic crowds, house party festivals, parallel, parallel threads is always locked into the groove and doing something different. Here, parallel threads with their song, Seventh Ward Strut. Shit, yeah. Shit, fucking yeah. Dude. So that's uh, a mixture. Uh, they sent me the the email to the production site, mm-hmm. and they had all their sub bands, which was a lot. I didn't know how many sub bands that a lot of musicians in New Orleans, uh, New Orleans actually have. Well, it's like he and the motherfuckers he fuck with y'all. y'all you jam with everybody. You, you know, know some. Of, you know some of these. You you knew yeah. some of these guys, huh? Yeah. And uh, one of the guys is in Bakey's Brew too. Yep. Yeah. It's my boy Jake. They yeah. fucking jam, dude. Everybody, everybody jam. If you jam, you jam. Let's jam. So. Yeah, man. I mean, which uh, a lot of people are in New Orleans. A lot of the cats are just uh, eager to get it, however they can, you know. So you know, just trying to explore all avenues. And there's a lot of quote unquote side projects, but it's really just projects, you know. Yeah. Like, they call them side projects just because you've never heard of them outside of their original projects. But it's still just great music, and just you know, these people are. Nowadays, musicians just have a musical ADD where they're trying to explore all avenues. So. Fuck yeah. Parallel Threads is a great name, too, by the way. Yeah. Very great name. And I love it because it's all instrumental music. And sometimes, like, I love lyrics. I love all everything. But when I hear all instrumentals, it brings me into my, like, jazz. I just want to throw on a jazz record, you know. And when I heard their music, I was like, fuck yeah, and then I went and watched their live set. I sent you the uh, yeah, YouTube yeah. link, and they're fucking great live. And I love that you can put on a great live performance and not have no vocals to it yeah. and just be energized and all over the stage and make your music pre- uh, prevalent. Is mm-hmm. It was beautiful. And yeah. big shout-outs for them, not only on their collective musical journey, but for giving us a chance to host them on episode 235, the first episode in the third coast podcast studio lounge whatever we're going to call it we don't know future. what we're going to call it we're going to call but, it something good but this it's great i yeah, like great. uh i like bands like this especially like the uh they're like very like intricate instrumental because like you think about think about like something like this so whenever someone reads a book no one reads the same book whenever you read a story you picture it differently so whenever you hear like an instrumental band What's going on up here? What you're like, what you're hearing, what you're seeing is going to be different than anyone else. Usually, you know. So like, you're you're mapping your own fucking your your own fucking story and your own idea of that sound and own and it, it's like creating its whole different idea to, to the next person, you know. And that's what uh, I love about uh, an influence like this, you know. Because you, you you know we. You can you can see how oh man it makes me think of this or it makes me feel this or this way and it's gonna, it, it, we can relate on like certain emotions or certain like ideas of it and shit but to each person they see something else inside their fucking head yeah and that's yeah. What, I, I call it songs within song I like I love that yeah yeah that's, that's perfect that's definitely fucking perfect. Let's dive into some words of wisdom. But before that, check out Third Coast Podcast on 5000W's.Third Coast Podcast on all major streaming platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and all major streaming 
platforms. All and of them. we're on fucking Pandora. I don't know why nobody listens to us on Pandora. Dude, like I our don't, Pandora listeners are I don't very know. small. Isn't that a radio station? I, I, said, listen I don't, to podcasts you, I don't on Pandora. use fucking Pandora. Dude. I definitely don't use it for podcasts. I use Spotify. I don't use fucking Pandora, dude. And one they more. have podcasts on Spandora, Pandora, yeah. or what do you like? I, I don't know. I don't. I've never used it. I don't know. And a big shout out to our second leading streaming country that overtook Canada recently is Sa- Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Saudi Arabia makes Fuck up yeah, dude, three percent, three percent of our podcast listeners right now. From all <laughs> for whatever reason, y'all are listening to us in Louisiana, hey, all the way in Saudi just, Arabia, just getting our information. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I mean, they're either getting our information, but they're helping us with streams. I mean, uh, they awesome. pass. Lama Lake of motherfuckers. <laughs> straight the fuck <laughs> out, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, Alaikum as salam. Alaikum as salam, brother. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah, I, I fuck with it, dude. Fucking get that get that sand out your ears and listen to fucking. <laughs> there goes fucking <laughs> and there goes all of our listeners. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sand over there. I'm, you know, it's relevant. Fuck. Okay, words of wisdom. <laughs> Where's the wisdom? Don't don't dip your nuts in soy sauce. No, I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you. You ain't gotta do that. I did it. Just ask me. Also, um, focus on what you gotta do, and then do it. <laughs> My words of wisdom is surround yourself by people that are doing positive things making positive moves and doing positive things within their community because sometimes it's best for growth to leave old stuff in the past and realize that there's no more growth in certain things. And sometimes that's hard to swallow because you want it to be like it used to be when you were hanging out and doing all the cool shit but sometimes you might outgrow that person, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's sometimes to accept that it's a hard decision to make for the betterment of yourself. But it's okay to want better for yourself and want better for what you're doing. So don't be afraid to say, I'm done, and then just move on because... Sometimes that's just how life goes. Are you breaking up with me right now? No, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just <laughs> saying though because it's happening? real. <laughs> so there's there is times in your life. He's speaking from the heart. Right? <laughs> yeah, you there's times in your life where you want something to work. You want like something to right be now. the yeah. same yeah. it I'm used to sorry, be, but man. it can't. Can I tag on to that? I'm gonna tag on to that with mine. Is is basically just follow your heart. You know what I'm saying? Like if it if it feels good, go with it. You know, if it feels bad, probably need to get away from it. You know, follow your instinct. Whatever feels good to you, go with it. I'm being broken up twice right now over air, man. Like, oh, I'm not going to I'm sorry. That's your conscience, I'm sorry. What do you got to tell me? I'm sorry. What do you got to tell me? I just want to say sorry. That's hey, it. Man, I didn't feel like Joe was breaking up with me. I'm just saying. I was like, I was like God damn, Joe, you're hitting fucking No, I mean, me. I don't know. Like, a lot Boys. of times, we're, we're, we're getting older in life and just shit happens. And sometimes it's just easy. It's time to step away from that situation. Because that situation is always going to be the same. Yeah, you, Jacoby, man. it's not you. It's just you it's, know. it's me. But uh, <laughs> it's all, right, not you. all right, we just hey. need to take time to work on right ourselves. on, man. Hey, Chuck, thank you for sitting in again, brother. Course, always bro. a pleasure, always dude. Here, I love you, dude. Um, Joe, what did do, Gates? Go fuck yourself. Um, I'm yes, Kobi. Man. This is a uh, parallel parallel threads. I hope you guys enjoy them. We'll see how I fucking fat. Let's go. <laughs>